Now, so today is is uh, not, we're not focused on AI, although something really cool about today in particular is we rolled out well what we're calling the beta version. It's actually we've been playing with this for a couple months now, but the beta version what we're calling blueprints. And um, if you didn't see the email from us, if you're a user of PropFuel and you didn't see that email from us, well, I think if I'm not mistaken, Ashley and Megan and Melissa, I think we turned on blueprints for everybody now as of this morning. Is that right? Yep. Like, I think actually as of like an hour ago, it's turned on for everybody. So we have this thing called blueprints. If you don't know what it is, again, this is not what today's topic is about. But blueprints are a way to have PropFuel create campaigns from a combination of our best practices, things we've learned from you and the clients we had before you um, for certain uh, use cases, whether it's new member onboarding or, or, or member renewals or, or conference engagement. There's all these, there's uh, I think about a dozen or so, Melissa, I bet you know, how many exactly do we have? Oh, I think it's like a dozen and a half, maybe. Dozen and a half. That's 18 to you and me. So, <laughs> or do you mean 12 and a half? Anyway, regardless, we have a whole bunch of blueprints in there. You click a button and it takes some automation plus some AI to create great landing pages and content. So now it turns you from a creator, which might take hours to create a campaign, and it does it in a matter of minutes. And then you become an editor. And so in theory, within, you know, five or 10 minutes, you could have a campaign up and running and ready to go. All right. So if you haven't been to one of these before, I love to see your faces. I'm not going to put any pressure on. I can see a few faces there. Thank you, Emma, Emmy. Hi, Megan. Thanks, Darren. How are you? Mona, great to see you, Jim. So if anyone else there wants to turn on your video, it's a heck of a lot more fun. Hey, Janice. Hey, Andy, pleasure. I, I love seeing your faces. This is much more of a meeting than it is a webinar. But what we've learned is it's better to start with some content and then we can spark conversation throughout that. Now, historically, what we've done is we've done sessions on particular, very specific topics, like let's talk about new member onboarding. Let's talk about the, the member acquisition process. Let's talk about the renewal process. Today, we're doing something a little different. Forget about those specific use cases that I just mentioned, plus about a dozen others. And we're gonna look at a lot of other unique ways just to get your members engaged, just to get them interacting with you. And so with that, I'm gonna shush up and give it over to Melissa. Awesome, thanks, Dave. And as he mentioned, you know, our goal is to queue you up with some examples. We're gonna have a few clients speak thank you in advance to those that have said yes. Um, and we really just want to have an open sort of discussion about how to get your members and even prospective members more involved with your association. So I'm going to share my screen here. Awesome. So today's topic, again, getting members and prospective members more involved. We just want to come up with a whole bunch of different use cases and examples where you can easily get people to raise their hand and say, yes, I'm interested in being a volunteer or joining a committee or submitting an abstract or uh, applying for an award that you have. We just want to make it really easy for people to raise their hands and express their intent because they'll... There's two bad situations that could happen if we don't, right? One is that nobody applies or expresses interest and then we're stuck. Or the other thing that's equally stressful and not great for an association professional is, you know, the deadline is midnight at a specific date and you just get a flurry of applications at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night that evening. And you had no idea leading up to it how many there were gonna be. And it's just this panic that sets in. So you want to alleviate that by asking questions, capturing that feedback, and then being able to take action on it immediately. It's the whole core use case here at PropFuel. So before I dive into any examples, I would love for you to post in chat, what are some, uh, give me one use case at your association where you feel like, oh, it would be so much easier if people would just raise their hand <laughs> and say, yes, I'm interested in this. So if you can just post like one example of where you feel like it would be really, really great if people just raised their hands and opted in for this particular thing, that would be 
That'd be awesome. And while that's going on, I'm going to sort of give you a little bit of set the scene here. Thank you, Emmy. Call for volunteers. Absolutely. Joining committees, speaking at events. Ken, great ideas. Call for board members. I love this. Thank you, guys. Hosting and chat. Getting people involved in leadership roles, right? And you want the right people involved in those leadership roles, but also not the same people that always raise their hand and volunteer. Uh, RSVPs for networking events. I love these ideas, guys. Keep them coming. I think this is awesome. And, and really, our goal here why we want to be able to use PropField. Opting in for auto renewal, yes. Anytime where you want someone to just raise their hand, say yes, it's gonna be so much easier to ask a question and have a yes button because our brains are hardwired to actually respond rather than if you have a like, oh, if you're interested, you should email us at blah, 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 or fill out this form. Uh, we want to make it super easy by just asking the question, be direct about it or indirect about it, depending on the use case, um, and being able to make it really, really easy for people. And if they say, no, they're not interested in volunteering and joining a committee in being a part of the board, finding out why not is going to be really, really valuable in that exact moment. And that's what PropView lets you do. So we can drive action on our goals. Melissa, Darren had a really good two actually opting in for auto renew. Yeah. And, and then text messaging, which is something I'm not sure if you guys are going to touch on getting people to opt in for SMS. Um, of course, that's something you do with PropView. Yeah, we have a whole round table on SMS. So um, I don't know if Ashley or Megan, if one of you can pop in chat while I'm talking through here. Um, that round table recording would be awesome for that. And that and Darren, that gets into the whole process around um that gets in the whole process around uh, opting in as well for the SMS. Exactly. And why we want to do this in prop fuel we and a couple of tips on this too we care about the response rate for things like you know renewals lapse member win back right we want to hear from as many people as possible so thanks megan put it in chat so if you want to check out all of our roundtable recordings they're right there um we we want to get to the people that are interested so there are times where you know what, it'd be great if 100% of people told us if they were interested in joining a committee or being a volunteer facilitator, that would be ideal. But really what we care more about is getting to those yeses and driving action for those people. Part of having a higher response rate and getting more yeses is having it be a timely ask. Seems like it makes sense, right? If you have a deadline for a poster submission and it's December 1st, Having an October, November check-in or a series of check-ins would be great rather than doing it in the middle of the summer. And it, to increase your response rate, we also consider maybe not a hard no, because some people are hesitant about that. We want to have a not at this time or not this year. Leave the door open. It'll encourage more people to feel a little bit more comfortable saying no. Uh, and then take advantage of that piece of information. Don't have it live in the ether of prop fuel. You can have it right back to your AMS, right back to your marketing system. And if it's something where you really need to take action on that right away, like someone wants to be a sponsor, have that alert someone on your team so that they can take action immediately and not wait two or three weeks to do that outreach. So as we're going through, we're gonna be going through a whole bunch of examples just really to spur inspiration. So if at any point you wanna chime into the conversation, do so in chat, or you can just unmute yourself and ask a question. We'll be going through a few different examples, again, really as a springboard for your thoughts and for discussion. So I'm gonna start here with the first example and we'll be hopping between myself, Ashley and Megan for all of these different examples. I wanted to start here with the ASAE since 
any folks are familiar with ASAE, uh, they have as part of their onboarding campaign and ask of if people are interested in volunteer opportunities, but they really only have volunteering open for a very small window of time. And so anyone that had expressed interest throughout the year, they wanted to have a more timely ask right before the May 1st deadline of, are you still interested because you've expressed that you would be interested in volunteering, would you like to volunteer and have the capacity to right now? A 32% response rate is fantastic, by the way. And a lot of people, they've been sending out broadcast emails, right? Hey, apply for it to be a volunteer. Here's the application. Click here to learn more. Um, even with that, and this was done right before this closed out, we still had a lot of people that hadn't taken action yet that said, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. That sounds great. So we're making it really easy for someone to raise their hand and express interest in that moment. You know, that, that happens all the time. <laughs> this is going to sound a little um, uh, promotional, but that happens all the time where people come to us and say, you know, we tried getting people to do this thing. Remember Endocrine did this thing. Uh, is anybody here from Endocrine today? No, I, so, but Endocrine did this thing where they wanted stories from their members about how Endocrine had helped them in their jobs. And they sent it out to like, I don't know, hundreds of people and they got like nine responses, I think. And and then the person over there uses PropFuel said, hey, let me try it on PropFuel. And they ended up getting like 150 or so. I don't remember the exact number, but an outrageously high number of stories from their members. We're talking open text. I mean, this isn't just clicking a button. It was awesome. So yeah, this we hear that all the time. Think about how that would apply in the more everyday use cases like renewals and new member onboarding and so on. Anyway, go on. Thank you, Melissa. Awesome. Awesome. So I think the next one is mentorship. Um, so I would just love to know who on this call has a mentor program. Um, you know, you can put it as a reaction. You could put it in the chat or unmute yourself and just say, hey, I do. However you want to let me know. I'm just I'm, I'm wondering who has that. If you're looking for the reaction button, it's down below. For those of you who use Teams, I know it can be confusing. I think everybody's looking for the reaction button. That's why right. I'm, they're all looking for it right now. Okay. Well, as you look for that, <laughs> I'm going to walk you through this. Um, and so, and the reason I ask that is I know having been at associations before, it can be really difficult to um, either create or sustain a mentorship program because when it comes time to get people to raise their hands and say, hey, I actually want to mentor and then connecting people with the mentees can be a, a big task. Um, so yeah, Mona, you found the reaction button, you have a mentorship program. Um, and so what Actful did, so they also have one, what Actful did is they said, hey, let's just use PropFuel and ask people, are you interested in mentoring or are you interested in being a mentee? Um, and I really like in this example, the starting question that they used because they have at their association kind of a years of, of teaching service that they consider to be good for a mentee and good for a mentor. Um, so they started out asking, how many years do you have? So the zeros through the tens got a question that says, great, would you like to be paired with a mentor? Um, and then anyone 11 years and above, uh, they got something that said, great, you should be a, ment uh, a mentor. Um, and so here, let me see, Mona says, we've tried to do a program. We have a lot of mentors, but struggle to get people who want to be a mentee. Yes, I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Um, so Actful had the same problem, I would say, with with theirs. So their numbers are amazing. The number of people who said that they wanted to be a mentor uh, were 114. So they now have 114 people that they can go to and say, like, hey, time to put in that service. Um, and then they did have 12 people who said they wanted to be a mentee. Um, I, I think a lot of the issue around that is like, these might be people who are just starting off in their career. They're overwhelmed. It's just one more thing that they have to put on their plate. But now you at least have that group of 12 people who have raised their hand and you can connect them. And then once that mentorship program is um, you know, off the ground running and it, and it does well, use those people for testimonials, like get them to be your advocates for the, for the next round. Um, so I just thought this was a really cool way to just, you know, get people to raise their hand. You know, uh, uh, Ashley, nothing to do with prop people. Just think about that problem where we have more mentors and we have mentees. Uh, um, I've never built a program like that, but I wonder if there's a way to create an alignment with some schools uh, mm -hmm. 
so that they could promote not only the association, but the mentorship, you know, so promote the mentorship. And of course the association is the one sponsoring it. Just a thought, Mona. All right. Thanks, Ashley. And even maybe potentially going out to any young professionals, or if you have a segment of members that you know are maybe just past that student phase, but not quite fully fledged in their career, or even going off of this and finding those that are younger um, in their career journey. Just great ideas. We're always worth asking. Yep. All right, so this one's uh, me as well. So this is, and I heard somebody say this when we started the call, getting those committee seats filled, that's a huge one. Um, so FEI Dallas is a really unique client. And I think anytime we have success with them, I'm just, I'm so excited because they are all volunteer led. And for all of you on the call, you know what that means. It means that they have full-time jobs that they're juggling with their volunteer work and really the, the you know, the organization rests on their shoulders. Um, so it's been really hard for them to fill their committee seats. Um, and so when they signed on with Propula, I said, hey, let's just send it out as a question. Let's ask them, do you want to serve on a committee? Get them to raise their hand. And then from there, we ask them, all right, give us your top three choices for a committee. Um, and it's cut off in this image, so you can't see it. But right under the question, we put a list of all of the committees with a little bit of information about they what, what they were. And we followed that throughout the entire campaign. So at any time when they were ready to pick their top three committee choices, they knew exactly what they were signing up for. Um, so great resp response rate. 20% of people said, yep, uh, or 20 percent of people answered. And then 45% of those people said, yep, I would love to join a committee. Um, so wonderful response rate. Um, and then I even threw this in here because I just love it. Um, so this is from their committee or their membership chair, essentially, who said, I don't think we've been this well staffed in years. Um, and this was from a single check-in. So you could do a single check-in in prop fuel, or you could even go back to people who didn't answer the first one and say, hey, checking in again, are you sure you don't want to join a committee? Um, so a great way to just kind of take that off your plate and, and get those seats filled. Any questions or thoughts by people, feel free to put it in chat or you can unmute yourself too. I'm actually wondering, is, is there anyone else on the call who's done something similar in prop field with their committees? It's always a risk asking an open question like that, but just wondering if you think of something you've done similar, <laughs> feel free to put it in chat. <laughs> Well, cool. so next I'm going to talk about focus groups, and I think Darren's on the call. Darren, if you wouldn't mind uh, giving us a sort of lay of the land of what, a little bit about how your focus group recruitment has gone in the past and how Prop Fuel helped this time. Yeah, we're a, we're a fairly large medical society. We do focus groups at our annual meeting every year, and I'm always in charge of recruiting for it. And I'm probably the only person in the world who gets busy right annual meeting time. So, you know, this was kind of a chore. <laughs> so it's really difficult to send the template, clone the template. You have to stress the people off the list. You know, and all of this, you have to change the survey, you know, wherever you're sending people. So last year, we were running late. I was like, you know what, let's just turn this over to Profil and Melissa. And we knocked it out about five business days. It was just so easy. And it was so easy for people to take the survey and if they said they're not interested, we just don't reach out to those people anymore. So um, this year was even better than last. I think we did two sets of focus groups in about six business days. So it cut my time from like two and a half weeks to a week. And uh, we ended up filling all of our groups and it turned out really great. If I could just add one thing that we do too is at the beginning of our annual meeting, we always ask people, you know, do you want to come this year? And since it's a medical society, ER doctors, they can't always come. So if they say no, well, we can stop bothering them. So when we send out emails, you know, to ask people to register, we don't get that information back when we do it through Click Dimensions and Dynamic CRM. But through PropFuel, it writes back to our uh, CRM. And of course, if you don't want to go because you can't get the time off, well, I don't want to keep sending you emails. 
So I think that's maybe the most valuable thing with, with, with prop fuel that we've learned is that we stop bothering people who don't want to be bothered. I think that's huge in getting people to say yes is knowing when to not ask somebody so that they can actually pay attention to those times where it is a genuine fit for them to say, oh, yeah, I am interested in that thing. And you're not continuing to pester the people that have zero interest because you're giving them that lean out. I love that, Darren. Yeah, and some people say maybe. And so then we can ask a follow up, you know, what's what has you on the fence? What would change your mind? And then we can go back and say, okay, well, it's a cost. Well, here's a discount code for $100 off. Or, um, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to be interested in the education. We can say, hey, well, here's our keynote this year. We're going to talk to the FTC chair about boarding in the emergency room. Um, so then it's like, oh, well, then maybe I will want to go to that. So it's been really helpful for us. I think we've been with Prop Fuel about a year and a half, maybe now, Melissa. And I bet we've done 50, 60 campaigns. Any questions for Darren from the group? I think what was cool about this one too, we just kept updating as the spots filled up. It's really easy to just yank them out of the redirect to another question and just only have those options that are available. That made it really easy too. I like the idea, Jim, what you said. Uh, I'm sorry, not Jim, Darren. I was thinking of Jim the Wiki because he's the other person I see in my screen right now. <laughs> so, but Darren, I like what you said about um, knowing who not to send things to. And, and it's really easy to do from one uh, check-in in Propfuel to another check-in in Propfuel. If they answer the question, just remove move them from the campaign, right? That's super easy. But you can also do that if you want to remove people from marketing campaigns in HubSpot or, or in Forms or whatever other marketing automation system you're using. What, Jim, uh, I keep saying Jim. Darren, what do you use for uh, marketing automation? We're uh, Click Dimensions and Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Okay. So, you're, you're, uh, so you have pretty sophisticated uh, marketing automation systems. And so Propul can talk to your uh, uh, Dynamics and then Dynamics and sends the data over to your marketing, the email marketing system to say, here's your new list, your current list of people that should be receiving this marketing promotion. Right. And we also use Propfuel for our renewal lists quite a bit too, because we had a survey at the end of our automation that says, hey, it looks like you didn't renew. Your membership's going to be canceled. Why are you canceling your membership? And nobody clicks on that link. Very <laughs> few open it up. I mean, this is the eighth email. We've, we've already bothered you from 60 days out, from 60 days before to 45 days out to 75 days out. You're really tired of us. But we'll do a separate campaign with Profuel that just says, hey, it looks like you didn't renew. Why not? And we'll give them like five choices, cost, I don't agree with your stance on gun control or, and then, and then open-ended. And we get a lot of open-ended answers from people telling us why they didn't renew. And some say, I don't have the money right now. My hospital stopped paying. And some people say, well, I'm retired. And they don't realize that we have a retired dues category that's lots cheaper than what they're currently paying. So we can go back to those people and say, hey, it's only going to cost you 200 bucks. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, then maybe I'll think about it. It, it. it is shocking to me just the 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 impact you can have by just reducing the friction a little bit. Like just a, a small decrease in how hard it is for the user, and it dramatically increases the level of engagement. Yeah, yeah. You know, I feel like I'm dominating the conversation now, but I wanted to talk about the campaign we did with our annual meeting this year, we did it uh, with Melissa's help, of course, we did a daily survey at the end of every day. So we had a question set up at the end of day one that said, hey, did you get what you wanted out of the conference today? If yes, what was great? And we gave them like three choices and open-ended. And if it was a no, it was like, where, where do we miss the mark? And we got tons of feedback from people saying, convention center was terrible. I don't like Philadelphia. Uh, your education sessions were too long. Uh, and so we got tons and tons of feedback we can use for next year to try to make the conference better for people. 
I think people are looking for opportunities to weigh in or to express their wants and needs. We just have to make it super, super easy because people don't have time otherwise. Yeah, the check-in was yes, no, three choices. That was it. So it was super quick. Love it. Thanks, Darren. Melissa, Thanks. I don't know if you can see uh, Amanda. Oh, yeah. I think has her hand up. Amanda. How's Hi. <laughs> I finally got to make it to one. <laughs> um, it's been a while. Um, nice to see you guys. Darren, I just had a question. Um, totally agree with you on the um the why are you not, not renewing and uh getting those answers back. We see the same thing. I'm wondering, um, you you said at the beginning of your annual meeting drive, you just asked people are they coming or not? Um, do you ask people? why they're not coming and if so do you get what are like your options for that and what kind of response do you get our options were um are are you coming and if, if the answer was no it was like why not and then the options for that were um can't get off work don't have the money don't like the city um i have family obligations and then it was open ended and so we know right off the bat, we knew right off the bat this year that it was hospitals not paying and a lot of people didn't like Philadelphia. So even before we even started, 50% of the people said it was because they couldn't, they had to pay for it out of their own pocket and they didn't want to, and they didn't like Philly. And so we know what we're up against going, going into it in June. Thank you. And like I said, a lot of people can't get off because someone has to watch the ER because they yeah. wrote, you know, everybody, well, yeah, you know, um, yeah, they, everybody can't get off work. Just out of curiosity, um, did you find um, in any of your other campaigns for the annual meeting leading up to it? We don't have a multi-day. Uh, we have one day. So doing the survey at the end of the day, um, at the end of days is not, wouldn't be our model, but leading up to it, were there any questions that you asked that uh, besides, are you coming or not, um, that you felt got a good response or that you, that you learned something valuable? Yeah, we learned a lot about um, the issues that they were worried about. Um, meeting in the emergency room, it, it's a lot of boarding, it's a lot of crowding, um, scope of practice. Um, and we didn't do a lot leading up to October. I think we did one campaign in the beginning and one campaign right before. And a lot of the results were about the same. So we knew that the things that were bothering people and keeping them from coming in June hadn't really changed in September even though we pushed all of the exciting things to do in Philly, family-friendly events, all this education, the FTC chair is going to be there. The same things that were bothering them in June were still bothering them in September. It's nice to know we're not alone. June, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> awesome. I love the discussion. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, Dr. Bittner. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, fun personalization feels. <laughs> I love that. I love how we get to be doctors sometimes. Um, so in this example, um, the Women's Society of Cyber Jutsu, uh, which is our cybersecurity gurus, had a call for facilitators. So they were getting ready to launch three different cohorts to help uh, their members and non-members uh study together and get prepared for the certifications uh, that they may have had coming up. Uh, so we have an example on the right sort of of the check-in showing you um, that we had in there the list of the cohorts. And I went against my best practices and did add those additional call to actions so they could learn more about these cohorts. The goal was to find people interested in facilitating. Um, and so Again, just echoing back what Melissa talked about earlier, we had a very low response rate for this. However, we had 16 people who signed up to be a facilitator, which is more than plenty uh, for, for what they needed. 
And then they had another uh, 16 people wanting to learn more. Uh, so we also included information on these pages on the um, actions here explaining more about the cohort. So maybe they didn't want to be a facilitator, but they wanted to attend as a participant. So we also included information on that. You know, this is one, this is a great example of where I don't think the response rate matters. Like It doesn't. It doesn't matter at all. Nope. What matters is that you've got 32 people that have expressed interest in 16 straight up that said yes. Now, uh, there are campaigns, I think, where response rate matters. But this is not one of them. Sometimes I've, I've talked to some people that are trying to connect sponsors with members, and they're happy with five people that they can legitimately bring to the sponsor and say, look, here's five members interested in, in what it is you're providing. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's very, very easy to get hung up on response rates. I do it sometimes. I, I know you do it, Megan. You looked at this and you're like super low response rate, but, and it is, but it just doesn't matter. Yep. We're all guilty of that. And you just have to keep perspective um, of what your goal is for your campaign. Um, but yeah. Any questions about um, this? Any, any, uh, anybody else doing sort of like cohorts or study groups? I know some of those, uh, uh, state uh, organized association executive, uh, groups do have them for the CAE. So just an idea if you ever need program facilitators. I could totally see that, Megan, like the combination of the last example with signing up for the focus groups and yeah. and something like this with the study group. So there's a large enough volume, like, are you interested in participating in a study group? And then pick one and then you could alert somebody that was leading that, hey, this person's interested, here's their information to reach out. So there's lots of ways to just get people to raise their hands and get them into the right place. Exactly. All right, so I'm super excited for this one because it's uh, one of my clients who's on the call today. Um, so I, she's going to talk about it much better than I could. Um, but essentially what this campaign is, is they needed people to nominate themselves or other people for awards. And so they wanted to kind of get people to raise their hand and then actually take the action of doing the nomination. So Emmy, I'll let you take it away. Yep. So like Ashley said, we were looking for candidates to feature for several different um, certificate and member recognition programs and award programs that we have. Um, it is like pulling teeth to get our members to nominate either themselves or somebody else. And so we kind of had to think about our approach and we were trying to point people towards these programs via social media, via broadcast emails, all the typical channels, and we just couldn't get bites to the point where we're combing through our community to source people ourselves. It's just a lot of extra staff time. Um, so we turned to Prop Fuel and it was a major success. This is actually the second time we've run this campaign. We ran it uh, the first summer we were with Prop Fuel and then we ran it again this past August. And we had almost 400 people respond. And of those 400 people, we had about 120 who actually gave us um, open-ended responses. And from there, we've been able to follow up with these candidates. And we had such success that we've been able to um, get candidates lined up for all of our features for the first quarter of 2024. So it's been huge. Um, and we plan to run this same campaign uh, either twice a year or annually. Mona, I think example of Oh, sorry, Dave, go ahead. No, no, no. I'll, you know, I'll keep filling in blank spaces with, with words, but this is another great example of reducing the friction, right? Instead, like, I know whenever I see a button that says, you know, nominate now, it's just like, it's just one step too difficult for someone like a brain like mine, you know, whereas if you can break it down a little, make it super easy. And I think, I think that's why newspapers are written at a fifth grade level. Mm -hmm. there, are there uh, still newspapers out there? They still make newspapers, <laughs> right? Here and there. Yeah. Um, one thing that, that I want to touch on what you said, like we would point people to SurveyMonkey and they would 
first go to the web page, then they would go to SurveyMonkey, and then we would have to follow up with them through there. So this cut out all of those middle steps, and we've been able to just follow up with people directly. And the cool thing about that is like you already have their name, their email address, you already have the database information. So why push them somewhere to ask that again? Just get them right to the form where you ask the, the real question, which is, you know, why do you want this award or why should this pe person get this award? And that's, I think, why you got, you know, to both of your points, why you got so many submissions, because it's just that simple question and that's it. Yeah. Mona, you got something? Well, I have a question because I'm very interested in this. We we always struggle for award nominations, but our you know and our award um, criteria or the the nomination forms have uh, you know a fair bit of information in them. So I my part of my question is: Are you just picking certain questions out of your award nomination form to get them to respond and then following up with them to finish? an application or are your applications really just one or two questions that they have to, to fill out? So I feel like I should clarify a little bit because this is technically our recognition program, which is part of our awards and recognition program, but we also have our annual awards that we give out um, at our annual conference every year. And that's a much more robust application. So yeah. for these ones, since we didn't have to go through a committee or anything, this is all recognitions all run Okay. Um, just by staff, we decided to really pare down the nomination and leave it at that simple question. Um, okay. Don't know if we'd have flexibility to do that on our awards program. I think we'll probably take the approach of, are you interested in nominating someone for an ACE award? Um, and then send them the application or try and follow up with them. But it is a little bit trickier because that's a much more robust application. That, and that's that's why I was asking because ours is a fairly most of them are fairly robust applications and I heard Dave saying like well once I press then then there's the like onerous thing of filling out all the the stuff so I was just trying to understand but I don't know we we might still try and come up with a way to just you know tease them into yes I want to nominate or suggest a name and then we would do the follow up so this is a good idea thank you thank you. I think capturing that intent is really important, though. So even, Mona, if you had a really lengthy application process, knowing who's interested, now you can follow up with that smaller group of people with more more targeted actions. It could be one-on-one -on -one or it could just be essentially a nurture campaign. I mean, we do the same with member acquisitions, member renewal, any of those anyway in prop fuel, or if someone says, yes, I'm interested, now we can talk to them slightly differently and not send them the same broadcast as everyone else. So just something to keep in mind. Oh, and a good question in the chat. Um, Emmy, how long is your application window? So again, this is, these programs are recognition. So they're rolling acceptance that we do these all year round. Our formal awards that we give at an annual conference, those submissions are open from about August through March. Um, so we have a pretty long submission window for awards and we are looking at ways to do what Mona suggested where we're trying to capture intent for awards. It's a little bit different than recognition, but it's all under the same umbrella. Um, but we had a lot of flexibility with recognition because it's very fluid on our side. Thanks, Emmy. All right, so um, this one is abstract submission. So uh, I'm gonna talk about this one since ASM wanted to be here, but they couldn't um, to talk about this. But this again is another single check-in question uh, where they went out to people to ask them if they're planning on submitting an abstract. So they gave them, you know, the, the deadline for it and then just asked them the simple question. Yes, or are you planning on submitting? Yes or no, not this year. Um, so again, they got um, just under 1,300 contacts to say yep to submitting. Um, and then 532 of those people actually, once they got the landing page, clicked through to start the submission. Um, which is great because following along what we're talking about, like those abstracts take a long time to submit. So just getting people to the page to start it is half the battle. Um, so they were very excited about that. Um, and then from there, of course, we have that intent of the people who said, yep, I would love to submit, but who on their other system have not finished that application. So they can later go to them and say, you started this, you told us you wanted to do it. We noticed you haven't completed it. 
how can we help? Um, and I think to Darren's point too, another reason that this campaign was so success successful is because they didn't ignore those no's. Um, so when somebody said, no, not this year, we didn't just say, all right, bye, talk to you next year. We actually asked them, okay, what's holding you back? And we gave them those multiple choice answers. Um, one of the big ones was travel cost. Um, another one was, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to attend because I don't like the location. Um, and they actually got 256 people of those no's to tell them, yeah, travel costs are a huge issue for me. And then we could tell them about the travel awards. Um, so that goes a long way in getting those people to the conference, or at least just opening that conversation with them. Um, so another one that I love, uh, again, like I said, this was just a single check-in, but there is no reason to think that you couldn't move people as they answer and then, or even keep them in until they complete a submission and then send additional check-ins later if you need to. Any questions on this one or thoughts? All right, so I have a fun little example here. So the Renal Physicians Association um, was prepping for their upcoming conference and they wanted to engage their current members and promo a little bit of their um, topic areas that they're going to have for their conference. Um, so we sent a check-in out asking, uh, which topic are you most interested in? And these uh list here is the buckets of how their conference educational programming will be segmented. And when they clicked an option, it then redirected them to a question that asked if they're an expert in the area willing to present on the topic. Um, so we have a few options. Yes, I am. No, but I know of an expert that might be. And then no, I just want to learn more on the topic. So as you can see right below that, the from the results, most people just want to learn more about that topic. However, we had uh, two dozen uh, responses of people who were experts in the areas or knew of somebody that was expert in the area. So that can just help you boost up uh, your speaker pool and get some content around some of those areas um, that they're doing their sessions on. I love these kind of examples where it's almost like a two for one. <laughs> like you're finding out what topics people are interested in. You can even use that to get a gauge on how big of a room to put these sessions in, but then also combining it with a, a question around speaker intent. Yeah, Amanda. Has anybody done, uh, so I really like this idea. Uh, let me back up. Wow, my thoughts are all over the place. Uh, first, I really like this idea because I actually just sent it to my colleague. Welcome who... to my world, Amanda. <laughs> oh, somebody it's else. You know. Um, so I really love this idea. So thanks for sharing. I'm kind of the same theme, just not topic centric. Have you ever done? Has anybody ever done one that's kind of event type centric? Like we're trying to get back into doing district events, and we're figuring out trying to figure out what do people want to come for? Do they want networking? Do they want, you know, like a happy hour? Do they want an education session? What would they come for? Has anybody ever done that and seen success with it? I'll chime in and say I've definitely seen people post, uh, um, send out check-ins along those lines of what are you most excited for? It's actually similar to my next example I'm going to share. Um, uh, but just uh, getting people excited about the event or the conference, even before signups are available, like that downtime where you're not sending a ton of promotional materials about like, you know, the, the cost and get a ticket and sign up is the perfect time to find out what people are most excited for. Cause it would be pretty easy to add like a running group if you didn't have one or some sort of social activity or, um, add in some extra networking happy hours throughout like that downtime between conferences is the perfect time to sort of tinker based on feedback. So it's always worth asking the question of when people, and you can even keep it generic, like when you come to a conference, what makes you most excited to stay besides the, you know, actual education? Yeah. 
I also want to touch on Mona's point in the chat. I love the idea of being able to widen the pool, um, getting that diversity of people because uh, there are some folks and I love them for that, that will always raise their hand and say, yeah, I'll do it. And that's amazing. We want to make sure that we're being inclusive of our wider community and making it easy for people to say yes is part of what reduces those barriers. How are you? And there's another question in here for the abstract campaign. We can go back. Um, yeah, I have it. To... Was it sent to everyone or just people that submitted previously? That's a good question. I'm going to pull up their account and find out. Um, I believe for this one, it was it was sent to everyone. Um, and then later they did do something for later years um, uh, where they said, uh, you know, they went just to people who had previously submitted ask them how the experience was, and then use that to like really sell them on submitting again for the next year. But I believe this one was to everyone. Hey, I'd love to hand the floor over to Mona. And if we run out of time, I'd rather take it out of our side, not Mona's side. Mona, all yours. I wasn't prepared for that, so I was still on mute. I'm sorry. You, you want to uh, share your screen or just talk through it? I mean, um. I might ask uh, Melissa if she has access to our um, our New Jersey AWWA account to pull it up. But I'm curious. I'm curious. This is this is again perfect timing, like somebody else said, um, because we're just about to try something for a member appreciation, and I'm curious to know if anybody on here has ever done anything like this, and if you have any feedback on what we're doing, like hey, that's a pitfall or maybe some ideas, but um, we're going to try, a, it's just a single check-in and we're going to try to get, but we're going to try to get a little bit of a twofer out of it. Um, we celebrate sort of like member appreciation. Uh, sorry, we're still working on it, by the way. We're planning to go live next week, but um, we, we want to send a check-in to say, you know, hey, we, we thank you so much for being a member and we'd like to, you know, we, you know, please tell us why you like being a member. So we're one part of this is to collect a testimonial, but it's also to show our appreciation. We're going to let them pick a prize. <laughs> and so we've given them like, you know, again, we're trying to drive engagement and get them to respond. So we're taking a little bit of a risk by putting some things out there because I'm just thinking that, you know, statistically, probably the response rate is not going to bankrupt us. Um, but basically, we're going to try to grab testimonials about why you like being a member, and then respond and get and, you know, like offer them something and have a little fun with the prizes. So um, I don't know, if, Melissa, if you can pull up the um, on the question about the to thank you for your membership, feel free to pick a prize. Um, no, the the actual questions. Well, you can see it there. So we we're offering um, one option is a ten dollar donation to cha our charity of choice in their name. We do a, like a monopoly game at our conference where they get fake money that they can spend on um, in our bookstore on logo goods. So that doesn't really cost us anything, but it gives them something. Um, we've got like mystery grab bag where we just are going to send them something. They don't actually get to pick it. So whatever I happen to have in my storage unit. Um, and then I said, you know, lunch with me uh, where I'll come up to their office with a sandwich or a pizza or, hey, you know what? You don't need to send me anything. I'm just happy to be a member. So I'd really love to learn if anybody's done this or what you think of how we've set this up. And you just wanted to show off because this is amazing. This is awesome. And I would totally choose the pizza with you one. <laughs> well, I don't, it'll be interesting to see how many people actually pick it or I, I don't know, the $10 donation. Uh, we'll see where that goes. But um, but has anybody done anything like this? I've never done anything like this, Mona, but you have just given me a really good idea to go back to my team with. <laughs> oh, and I love, I love this idea. And if I was a member, I think that I would do like the mystery swag bag because, you know, it's always cool to have swag from your professional organization. 
I still have the swag you sent me a few years ago, Mona. It was a, I think you sent me a towel and a hat. Yeah, I got that mystery swag bag. Yeah. Uh, Mona, anybody else? Any other comments? I, I have something I want to say, but I'm curious what other people say. Darren says, this is great. Our association might be a little negative. Always trying to find out why people aren't going to do something, or aren't going to buy something. It's nice to use this to find out why people like you. Well, we're, we've we've been struggling to get people to send us testimonials too. So we were like, look, if we could, let's let's offer them this and let's try to use this as a way to capture. I know somebody before said that they got like 150 stories. So I'm hoping to get something else out of this that we can then use for our recruiting stuff. But um, but again, I I don't know if anybody sees like any potential risks in doing this other than we might make a lot of donations. Um, or I might buy a lot of sandwiches. What All right. You Here, here's a here's a thought I had. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, Melissa may have may have um, was going to suggest it maybe afterward. I, I suspect she would. I personally don't like starting check ins with open ended questions because the option is answer. Right. So people click on answer. It's mm -hmm. not a great way to begin a conversation uh, when somebody, in order for them to participate, they have to click a button to go to the next page. I might swap these a little bit, say, we appreciate you. We want to give you a gift um, uh, and have them pick a gift and say, but before uh, we do that, I need some feedback from you. So the second question, maybe on that second page you have, hey, before we follow through with this, I need um, I need to know from you. Tell us why you like being a member. Okay. And, yeah, and we sure. can help you out with more details around that. But I, I'm my only feedback is maybe swap those. And I think you're much more likely to get a higher engagement if people can actually pick a little okay. fun gift and then give you some feedback. Also, you're warming them up a little bit to say nice things. Okay. All right. Yeah, I had debated doing it like doing the something as like an external embed, like, you know, question one, then leading them somewhere else. But I, I liked the idea of kind of keeping it together. So, okay, that's good feedback. And thank you. I'm going to see if there's anything else in the chat. You can also, I wanted to share this tip. If you have an open-ended question, but you don't, you want that to be the first question, but you don't want it to say answer, you can create a multiple choice question that only has one answer, which essentially does the same thing, but then it lets you customize instead of it being an answer button, like literally saying the word answer. It could be like, I'll tell you why or something like that so that you can customize that a little bit more if you wanted to start with something that was sort of open-ended because then you could lead to an open-ended question and then this all in the same sort of form essentially. Thank you. Thank Super you. Super clever. I like that little trick. A little hack. I just thought of that. I might have to come back to you on it. That's I appreciate that. I appreciate the feedback because um I I was so excited that I was gonna get to tap into a whole bunch of other folks and see yes. what you know. The other thing you could do, Mona, is you could um do like a multiple choice and put some of your membership proposition options and member benefit options in there and then have an other and have a box that says please specify and then have that be they can type in what they like oh you mean like give them like some of those i like getting the discounts on Right. I like, I like attending conference. I like being able to network. I like the, if you guys have it in the online community, things like that. Yeah, okay. what do you love most? Mm -hmm. Question. Thank you, guys. All right, and that could lead to another page with an yep. open ended question. Tell us more, or or tell us in your own words what you like about. Yeah, that's that's an interesting approach. Okay, thank you for that. Sh it, was there anything else, Ashley, Megan, and Melissa, that you wanted to share? Anything that you, you're 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 really dying to show? We could do the. I think there's three or four examples up. We could rattle through those in like 30 seconds. Let's just rattle through. Inspiration, just for inspiration here. So, um, there we go. Uh, let's go through these. 
I'm going to do this super fast, but just for inspiration for ideas, not that we're going to really dive into these examples. I wanted to follow up on Megan's example um, with asking, is there a future speaker you'd like to see? I have an idea, me. So collecting that form information all at once, making it easy for people to opt in. And then in that same campaign effort, it was actually an effort to identify sponsors who would be a potential sponsor without doing a direct like, hey, do you want to sponsor the conference? So the question was, what type of connections are you hoping to make in the coming year? And then if they said that they were looking for new clients or customers, they were then redirected to more information about sponsorship and how that would be a great fit. What's the ROI for that? And then they could have followed that up with, we were talking about some additional nurture campaigns around sponsorship. So this is one I've been hearing quite a bit about lately is like, how do I identify, like bubble up to the surface who might potentially be a sponsor so that I could have a more direct campaign effort to ask them about sponsorship opportunities. Something like this would be the way to go. I think there is. Megan, if you want to touch on this one briefly. Yeah, this one was really great. So um, AAID, who is Implant Dentistry, has um, a foundation. And in that foundation, they have a program called Smile Veteran, where providers um, provide services for free to veterans. And they had only a handful of um, dentists in the program providing their services. So they sent out a check-in finding out they want to educate their members about the program. Also, it's fellows, um, not just all their members. They have to be a certain status. Um, and then once they um, selected an option, no matter what they selected here, it took them to the same branch question. It was, are you interested in providing dental work for one of our cases? And you see here, 94% said, yes, how do I sign up? So within a matter of I think two days, they had 17 providers join and they did not expect that. They expected maybe two or three. So it was really awesome. And I just loved uh, being able to help with this campaign. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. And thanks, Janice. I love that. Pop in the chat, enjoying the format. That's awesome. We're so glad. We do these to try to just spur some ideas, get your brains thinking about how you could take this back to your association and really make a difference. All right. So Set those around. are our examples. We wanted a plug to follow mm. up with Dave said earlier about blueprints. Save the date. Um, we'll be sending out more information, but our next round table will be on blueprints. Maybe we'll share some success stories then because we've had a few clients go live with their campaigns already. Um, it's turned on like as of what a couple hours ago for everyone's account. So feel free to tinker. Let us know what questions that you have. As Dave said, we're kind of in like a beta test mode. So if you see something in there and you're like, huh, that's weird, just let us know. <laughs> um, and if you have any questions, you know, reach out to your CSO. You guys are great. Thank you so much. Sticking it all the way through. That just shows your level of commitment to learning new things and improving what it is you're doing at, at your association. Kudos to you. Well, well done. We're always trying to make it easier for you to be successful. Let me rephrase that. We want to make it easier for you to do better. Meaning we're trying to do things and prop you to make your job faster and way, way more effective. That's That's how I believe technology should be used. So off to the races with you. We'll see you in a month. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone.